Uh, I just wonder how significant uh, it is that Prince Harry's popularity rating has gone through the floor. People are voting with their Amazon accounts, aren't they? Uh, in fact, his book has sold more than 1.4 million copies, the English language version anyway, uh, on its first day of publication. It's breaking records left, right and centre. So does it matter that he's not as popular? No, I mean, he, he, Britain is not his his main target audience anyway. I mean, he he he'll be delighted that he's selling lots of copies. Uh, he's kind of, I think he's written us off. Um, he's not been terribly popular in this country for a little while, but it's the US where it matters, and he's much more popular there. Uh, and the fact that he sold how many squillion copies, we <laughs> sold plenty more of coverage so the idea is barely covered it's just it's just nutty and i, I mean this i'm afraid is harry seeing th things through his own sort of distorting prism of the evils of the media he also uh, has very definite things to say about about how royal reporting works doesn't he valentine that pieces does, are, yes. are 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 put together with complete collusion between the royal household and journalists um, what is your perspective uh, on that, on the fact that Prince Harry seems to allude um, that it's almost, um, I don't know, the kind of done thing, this this collusion between both those parties? It's almost like a conveyor belt of PR. I mean, if you, if you put the idea that someone like me is a, a sort of a tame pet of the royal press office, and we just do what they say, they spoon feed us little snippets, they'd laugh it out of court. I mean, people like me and, and my colleagues in the other papers, we're there half the time to be a thorn in the side of the palace. Uh, so the idea that, you know, it's some evil cabal uh, plotting together against Harry is crazy. And also the idea that um, he suggests that the the palace was, was constantly sort of drip feeding uh, negative stories, uh, against Harry and Meghan uh, to, to the royal correspondence. It's not a picture I recognise at all. Um, I mean, yes, one or two neg some, some negative stories did appear, but where they came from, I don't know. Uh, and the palace was always trying to stop those stories, was mm. always trying to, you know, they certainly wouldn't encourage them. They would, they would say no comment. Um, they would firmly wish they would go away. Um, it's a very strange and distorted picture that he presents. And you've been reporting on the royal family, Valentine, for how many years? Uh, a few years. I don't <laughs> want to get that. <laughs> a few years. A sizable amount of time. And so you yeah. would absolutely have have had experience of that if it if it was an opportunity. Do you think other royal correspondents may have been a bit more susceptible to that? No, I mean, you know, uh, journalists always uh, are always receptive to, to, to stories wherever they come from, as long as they're true. Um, so yes, if someone wants to leak something, and you know, some stories did did come out, and some of them were negative. I mean, I'm not denying that for one second. The idea that it was um, a systematic practice by the palace uh, to do that is is not something I recognise. But what I would say is this sort of thing happened a lot more in the Charles and Diana era when there was a lot of briefing that went on. Uh, and again, but again, you know, it's arguable about the extent to which that was briefing uh, by the various palaces or, or briefing by people at one remove from the palaces. Often the people at one remove um, from these institutions that are responsible for, the, for some of the more egregious briefing that yeah, goes on. Yeah. Where's this left you then, um... It's been great to speak to you because uh, you are the voice of reason. You're hugely experienced. Where has this whole episode left you? If I'm to kind of round up our Prince Harry coverage, at least for this week, uh, with you. Um, the tell-all memoir, the associated TV interviews, the Netflix series. We know there's more stuff coming as well through other books that they have tied into a deal. Where's this left you as a, as a royal writer, if you're to draw your own personal conclusions from it, Valentine? Um, I, there are so many conclusions <laughs> to draw. One is that um, Harry is, I think, a very damaged and sad individual. Uh, and I feel very sorry for the, the rift that's happened in his, in, in his family, as I'd feel sorry for the rift that's happened in any family. Uh, the other thing I would say is that if you read the book, you get a, a better image of Harry than you do from reading all the extracts, the, by picking out the, the nasty bits, as it were, it, he comes across as, as perhaps a bit more petulant, uh, 
than he is in the book. Um, but there are still petulant books, uh, bits, bits in the book. Uh, and it was kind of quite gratifying. I think he came across quite badly in the uh, Tom Bradby interview. So it was quite reassuring um, to see him on The Late Show um, in the US, because you sort of, although he was whingy and uh, in that to an extent, you also saw a bit of the old Harry. Yeah. And it was quite good to be reminded of the old, funny, engaging Harry that that we rem we remembered and that the world took to their heart. Yeah. 